You have a big presentation coming up and want to memorize its content so you don't look and sound like an amateur. How can you do it in the shortest amount of time? Allow me to help. Hello world, the dynamic duo of Vizme and Mike Ploger is back with another video to help your presentation worries. I get it. It's your time to step up in front of professionals, coworkers, or classmates, and you have to prove that you know what you're talking about. It's concerning you, so you want to memorize your presentation so you can at least maintain eye contact with your audience, interact with them, and get rid of all the uhs and awkward pauses. The professionals you've watched in TED Talks can do it, so why can't you? Well, you can, and in this video, I'm going to share eight techniques that the professionals use themselves when preparing for a presentation. Even the biggest names in the world get nervous for presentations, but they take the time to prepare just like you're doing by watching this video. In just a few minutes, you'll know eight proven methods and exercises that will help you memorize your presentation or speech in no time. Shall we? The first technique that we recommend is to build a memory palace. What the heck is a memory palace, you're probably asking yourself, and I don't blame you. Allow me to explain as best I can. When our brains are storing information, oftentimes it's kind of like taking laundry and just throwing it anywhere in the house. There's no organization, and when you need to remember that information or find that article of clothing, it can be difficult because you didn't properly store it away. It's a lot like hoarding. You take a lot in, but soon you lose it because your brain is a mess. Through associations, you can organize your brain and the information that's entering it. When you start pairing ideas or memories with specific locations, it's much easier to remember, or in this case, memorize. Here's an example from a theoretical friend of mine named Joe, who's releasing a new smartphone. It might seem bizarre to you because you're not Joe and you don't share the same brain, but it makes sense in his mind and therefore helps him memorize the information for his upcoming presentation. In his palace, Joe associates his bedroom with the phone's battery. Why? Because he thinks of how sleeping recharges his own internal battery or his energy. As he moves downstairs, he hits his work area and thinks camera because all the remote work he's been doing has required a webcam. We won't discuss what happens in the bathroom, but soon he's in the kitchen and he's thinking about the smartphone's speed because the kitchen is where things are heating up. And lastly, he stops in the living room because he wants to mention the phone's display. In the living room is where he watches TV. Keep in mind, this is all theoretical. They're fictional spaces linked together so Joe can remember his thought process. Hopefully you're understanding and I haven't lost you completely. Allow me to explain how you can build your own memory palace to help. First, think of a location. It could be real or fictional. Just be familiar with that place. Then determine an order in which you'd walk through that location. Where are you going first, second, third, and so on. Set that order. Next, you want to consider the details of each stop. Visualize items, furniture, colors, maybe even smells or what you'd hear. Then step four is to make associations with your palace and your presentation topic. Relate what you want to say with that space in your mind, similar to how Joe did. Then lastly, walk the route of your mind palace over and over and over again leading up to your presentation. This will help you familiarize yourself with your palace and enable you to retrieve information quicker once it's time to present. It's also better than memorizing every single word because then you could start to sound like a robot. Memorizing in spaces and being able to potentially go off the beaten path if necessary will be very helpful. If your content consists of boring or dull information, creating a mind map can help you. Our second technique will require you to map out your ideas on paper or digitally before studying that map to be extremely familiar with it. These mind maps lay out the main points of your presentation in a diagram rather than a block of words. These examples here are actually templates that you can edit on visme.com. Through colors, shapes, lines, images, bubbles, you name it, you can create associations through these maps and your mind is more likely to remember it later. Your brain is much more likely to remember shapes and colors than it is plain text. 
Have you ever wrote something, then tried saying it out loud and thought, what the heck, that doesn't make any sense at all? It happens to all of us and is one reason to rehearse your speech by actually speaking out loud. It's easy to read your speech in your head, but it's not helping nearly as much as it would to physically say the words. By doing so, you'll remember it better. This is because it takes two personal acts to speak out loud, using motor speech skills and self-referential information, or being able to say, I said it. When information has personal associations like that, it's easier to remember. So don't take the lazy route, find an empty space if you need to, and rehearse out loud. Or why go to a lonely, quiet space when you can practice with a trusted friend? By speaking out loud, you'll remember the information better, but you'll also gain some valuable feedback from that other person. It also makes rehearsing feel a lot more like having a real audience, so you'll be more conscious of all the aspects of your presentation. And why stop there? I encourage you to share your designs and slides with that friend too. Does it make as much sense to them as it does to you? Do they have any questions you can answer ahead of time or prepare for come presentation day. The worst thing that can happen is they have some improvements for you, but that'll just help once it's time for the real thing. And a hidden benefit is that it'll do wonders for your confidence. Any concerns or worries you had should be cleared up after practicing in front of a trusted friend or two. Our fifth tip is to break up the information in your presentation. You can do this by writing your presentation down and organizing it into sections and bullet points. Then prioritize the points by importance. This won't be the order in which you're saying the information, but it will allow you to memorize the most important information first. You can allocate your prep time for these important points. Another popular strategy is called chunking. Let's look at a simplified example of what exactly this is. Say you have six random three-letter words to memorize. Chunking will attempt to group these words together. So rather than six random words, you now have three groups of similar words. The words now have meanings. Memorizing these meaningful groups is easier than six random words. Try this with your information, but break it down into intro, features, challenges, and conclusion. Now our most lasting memories are those that we've recorded or documented. There's a reason for that, and it works the same way for memorizing presentations. Get out your phone or camera, hit record, and let it fly. Then, listen to your recording continuously leading up to the real thing. The more you listen, the faster you'll memorize it, just like a song. And if you record video, it'll help with body language and your awareness of how you look throughout your presentation. It's a win-win. Studies have also concluded that writing down material will help you remember it. Take the time to write down the bullet points and information that you had previously typed out. And you don't need to stick to just words. Include illustrations of your own over some of the most crucial points of your presentation. When it comes time to perform, your brain will pick up on those clues that you had written down earlier. You can write out an entire diagram if you like. Fact of the matter is, Writing things down will help you remember information quicker and easier. Some would say to see with 2020 vision, you need to utilize the 2020 rule. Okay, so maybe I'm the only person to have ever said that, but it kind of works if you think about it. The 2020 rule states that if you review your material for 20 minutes, then repeat that and review 20 minutes more, and then review for 20 minutes one final time you'll remember information so much better, AKA you'll see 2020, figuratively. One rule to follow with this is to take at least a 30 minute break in between. By sticking to this time frame, you'll really focus on the important material during your 20 minutes studying. So set a timer and get to work. But first, let me say bye. I really appreciate you all trusting both VisMe and myself with your presentation questions. If you're looking for more creative aspects to bring your presentation to life, I'd recommend trying visme.com. With thousands of templates, designs, illustrations, photos, animations, and so much more, it is the nucleus of presentation building. And if you liked our video in your mind, like the video in real life. 
The button is right down below, and if you're feeling inspired today, subscribe and check out our channel where we are constantly creating content to feed you creative, hungry presenters and designers. We'll catch you back here next time. Thank you again for watching with VizMe. I'm Mike Ploger, helping you make information beautiful.